Today, I have nine high quality AWS projects to help you get hired. These projects are going to be completely different from everything else you see online. For example, I'm not going to ask you to host your resume as a static website on S3. That's easy stuff. Everybody's doing that. And to, to stand out, you have to do projects that nobody else is doing. You need to do high quality projects. These projects are based on my five plus years experience in the cloud industry and they also reflect real world projects that I've been asked to do. And I'm sure once you begin your cloud career, you'll be asked to do as well. So get ready because these projects are very important to helping you get that first cloud job. Welcome to Cloud Career Mentor. I'm your host, Fayomi Fashionu. On this show, we aim to inspire, educate and motivate you to make the right moves to break into the cloud industry. If you're looking to get your first cloud job, I have created a free guide that you will love. It's a proven blueprint that walks you through the three simple steps you need to make to make you more of an attractive candidate to recruiters to give you a better chance of securing that cloud job. If you want to stand out to potential employers, grab the guide, the link is in the description below. I want you to pause this episode, go in the description, download the guide and then come back to this episode. Have you done it yet? Good. Now let's jump into the episode and talk about the nine AWS projects to get you hired. I want to begin by giving you the three main reasons why high quality cloud projects are important to your job search. The first reason is that by completing high quality projects, you develop a deeper understanding of the technologies you've been learning. So for example, if you've been learning about Terraform or CICD, by applying those skills into a, in a project, you develop a deeper understanding of the nuances of how they work. The second reason is that they help you build up your confidence. The more projects you do, the more confident you get because you're encountering challenges, troubleshooting issues. And as you overcome these challenges, you become more confident in your own technical ability. The third reason they are important is because they give you something to talk about in interviews. So it's more powerful if in an interview you can say, I have done project A, B, and C. These are the issues I encountered. This is how I resolve them. By using projects to elaborate on your answers and your experiences, you will definitely stand out from other candidates who may not have as many high quality projects as you have because you're demonstrating that you've done the same things that the employer will want you to do in your actual job role. So that's how you show you have experience, even if you haven't had a job in the cloud before. So those are the three reasons why high quality cloud projects are important. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's dive into the projects. I want to begin with some easy projects, you know, just to help you get some quick wins under your belt before we will then move on to more advanced, uh, more challenging projects, which would really take your skills to the next level. The first project I'd like you to do is to deploy a WordPress server on an EC2 instance. You can achieve this by creating an EC2 instance in AWS. Feel free to use the default subnet. Uh, SSHing onto that instance, installing WordPress and all its dependencies. And at the end of the project, you should be able to copy the public IP of the instance, paste it in your browser and get the WordPress welcome page. So that's how you know you've completed the project. If you're able to complete this project, it would give you experience with EC2, Linux, MySQL databases and security groups. So this is the first project you should do. The second project I'd like you to do is all about testing your AWS CLI skills. That's the command line interface. And the project is this, create two S3 buckets and then put some, upload some files into the first bucket and then use the AWS CLI to copy all those files from the first bucket and upload them into the second bucket. This way you're manipulating AWS resources using the AWS CLI. So that's the second project. The third project I'd like you to take on is all about backing up and restoring EC2 servers. So again, what I'd like you to do, create a new EC2 instance, SSH onto it and create a new file. We can call it example.txt. And what I want you to do is write into that file, hello, career, cloud career mentor. So I want you to write that in that file and save it. And then what I want you to do is take an image of that EC2 instance, 
and then create a new EC2 instance based on that image. And then once you SSH onto the new EC2 instance, you should, you should see that same file example.txt. That's how you know your backup and restore has been successful. By completing this project, you will know how to backup and restore EC2 instance, which is a key disaster recovery objective. Now that you've got through the first three projects, we can now move on to more advanced topics, right? So project four is called advanced WordPress deployment. If we think back to project one, where I asked you to deploy a WordPress server on an EC2 instance, while that's a very quick and easy way to get WordPress set up, we now want to go a bit deeper, right? Because in a real world, this is not how you deploy an application on AWS, simply because it's not as secure, it's not as scalable. So project four, now you're going to deploy WordPress in a more uh, secure and scalable way. Let's dive into it. So for this project, what I want you to do is to create a VPC with three public and three private subnets. I want you to create a MySQL RDS database in the private subnet. Then I want you to set up and configure WordPress on an EC2 instance, also in a private subnet, and then connect that EC2 to the RDS using security groups. I then want you to set up an application load balancer in the public subnet and then connect it to the EC2 with WordPress installed using target groups. You might need to create a bastion server on an EC2 instance in the public subnet so you can SSH onto the WordPress server in the private subnet. However, that's not necessary anymore because AWS has ways you can connect to the EC2 instance in a private subnet. I'll let you figure out how to do that as part of your learning. To confirm that everything works, you should be able to put the DNS of your load balancer in your browser and that should take you to the WordPress page. That's how you know you've configured it all properly. Project five is all about auto scaling. The reason we implement auto scaling in AWS is because it's a really effective way of improving the availability and reliability of your applications. So you can create more EC2 instances when there's high demand, and then you can reduce the number of EC2 instances when there's low demand for your application. For this project, I want you to create another VPC with three public subnets and three private subnets. I want you to set up an EC2 instance in the private subnet, but this time I want you to install the Nginx web server on it. Next, I want you to create an application load balancer in the public subnet and connect it to the Nginx EC2 web server in the private subnet, again, using target groups. Next, I want you to, you to configure an auto scaling group that takes into account the application load balancer as well as the EC2. Finally, I want you to set up a CloudWatch scaling alarm that increases the number of EC2s available in the auto scaling group. If the CPU utilization goes above 70% and reduces the number of EC2 instances available, if the CPU utilization goes below 40%. By completing this project, you can show employers that you have experience implementing auto scaling in AWS, which is a very important skill to have, and it will definitely help you stand out from everyone else who hasn't implemented this. Project six is all about implementing a simple CICD pipeline. Continuous integration and continuous deployment is very important in your cloud or DevOps journey. So knowing how to implement this is crucial. In this project, the, what we're trying to achieve is deploying some code on your local machine, uploading it to a repository, GitHub for example, and then once the code is uploaded to that repository, it automatically triggers a pipeline that deploys the application on an EC2 instance in AWS. To make this happen, the first step is to create an EC2 instance in AWS. You can have this in the public subnet and you need to then install Nginx on that instance. And once Nginx is installed, you should be able to put the IP of the EC2 instance in your browser and get the default Nginx page. Once you've done that, you can then set up a GitHub repository where all your code is gonna get uploaded to. After this, I want you to implement code pipeline and code deploy and set it up in such a way that once new code is pushed to the GitHub main branch, it automatically triggers automation that then takes that code from 
the GitHub repository and deploys it in the uh, EC2 instance. So you can change the code from, you can change the web page from the default Nginx web page to whatever new HTML files you've put in the GitHub repository. Hope that makes sense. This is a really simple CI CD project, and if you can complete it, it would show employers that you have the skills to implement more advanced CI CD projects for them. Speaking of more advanced CI CD, this brings us nicely to project seven. This is all about deploying a more realistic CI CD setup. In this scenario, we'll have two separate environments one development environment and one production environment. In the real world, Organizations usually have a production environment, which is the server or services that actually serves the code or the application to the end client. And they also have a development um, environment, which is where their developers can upload code, where they can test the application and test that everything works. And then once they confirm that, they can then deploy that code into the production environment. So the development environment is mostly used by the developers and the internal teams for testing to make sure that nothing breaks. And then once they confirm that the code works, they then deploy that code in the production environment. This scenario or this project is very similar to the one you've just done. The only difference now is that you have two servers, two pipelines, two code deploys, and also uh, two branches on the GitHub repo. So in the first scenario, you only had one of each, but now in the GitHub repo, you now have two branches, a development branch and a main branch or production branch. The idea here is that when you deploy, when you upload to the development branch on GitHub, that triggers the development pipeline, which uploads to the development EC2 server. And then once you're happy, you can then merge that branch to the main branch on GitHub, which would then trigger the more production pipelines, which then deploys to the production server on EC2. This is the more advanced stuff. You can see AWS can get quite complicated. DevOps can get quite complicated. And these are some of the things that no one else is doing. So if you figure out how to do this, then you will definitely stand out from everybody else. Project eight is all about developing your serverless skills. So this is going to involve Python, Lambda, and CloudWatch events. The goal of this project is to automate the stopping and starting of EC2 instances. In AWS, you'll build for EC2 instances based on the number of hours you've used. So for example, if you use, if you run your EC2 instances for 24 hours, you will build for 24 hours. However, there are a lot of EC2 instances in organizations that are only used during working hours, right? So for example, from nine to five. And so, by running them for 24 hours, you're actually getting billed for more than you need. So a lot of organizations decide to schedule their EC2 instances to stop at 5 p.m. and start up at 9 a.m. to save money. And so this project is all about automating that. So what you need to do is create two Lambda functions, one to stop instances and one to start instances. And I want you to write the code for each Lambda in Python, right? You know, this is all about building up your Python skills. So write the code in Python. And then you also create a CloudWatch event trigger, which is where you can set timers or schedulers. So you can set the startup one to start at 9 a.m and the stop CloudWatch event trigger to stop at 5 p.m. And so at 9 a.m. it triggers the Lambda to start and then that starts up the EC2. And then at 5 p.m. it triggers the stop Lambda to, to stop at 5 p.m. And so this is how you automate the stopping and starting of EC2 instances. The final project, project nine, is all about infrastructure as code specifically Terraform, because this is one of the most popular tools to script your infrastructure. Now I'm a bit cheeky calling this one project because it's actually eight projects in one. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through all these projects you've done already, like all the previous eight projects, and you're going to deploy all of them using 
Terraform. So previously, you've probably used the AWS console to click around and create all the relevant resources, which is a great way to get started. However, to really improve your Terraform and scripting skills, I want you to then replace every time you use the AWS console to create a resource, I want you to use Terraform to script it. And I guarantee if you can do this for all eight projects we've just discussed, you'll become a Terraform expert. I know we've covered a lot of projects in this video, so feel free to come back, watch again, and you know try to figure out how to do this project. So keep coming back, keep watching each video so you can refresh yourself on all the different projects you need to do. If you're really keen to get started and get the solution to all these projects, I've created tutorials walking you through all of these and more at cloudcareermentor.com. You can check out the link in the description below. My aim with this is to help you get your first cloud job using a tried and proven technique and a very simple three-step process that I used and dozens of other students have used to break into the cloud industry. Step one is to learn the cloud fundamentals. And this includes AWS, CLI, Linux, Bash, Terraform, Python, CICD, serverless, and more. So understanding these technologies, how they work at a foundational level is very important. Step two, practice complex cloud projects. You know, as I mentioned earlier, the best way to solidify your knowledge and build your skills is to actually create real world, high quality cloud projects like some that I've already mentioned in this video. Step three is to get that cloud job. And you can do this by successfully communicating your skills and your value. You know, you need to know how to write a resume in a way that stands out to recruiters. You need to be able to interview in such a way that impresses hiring managers. And I teach you how to do all of this and more in the Cloud Career Mentor Program. For those of you who've made it this far, congratulations. And I have a special offer for you. It's just for you because you know i know not a lot of people are going to be patient enough to watch the video all the way through so congratulations now here's the offer i have created a secret code called youtube 21 and if you use this code to sign up to any of the cloud career mentor packages you get 20 percent off so that's 20 percent off any program at the cloud career mentor using youtube 21. This offer is only available for a very limited time. So definitely go to the cloudcareermentor.com, link in the description below, get a package, use promo code YouTube21 and sign up today. Make sure you give this a like if you've enjoyed this on YouTube and drop a comment as well. Let me know, you know, if you've seen these projects before, anything else you want me to cover, I'm here to help you improve your job prospects. Make sure you share this video on LinkedIn, Twitter, WhatsApp groups, because not a lot of people know about these high quality cloud projects. So definitely share the message and share the love. All right, see you in the next one.